Hey everybody, Tony Day and Little Joan here with, I don't know what I'm going to call this, Hollywood hot take or a screenwriter thing or a hot just a hot take. Uh, but this is going to be about comics. Kevin Feige says, comic book popularity not a factor in movie t and TV, at, uh, TV adaptations. Uh, so this is very interesting. Clownfish TV is talking about it as well as Yellow Flash 2. Uh, so I got to weigh in because it's comic books. Smash like and subscribe. Thank you for smash liking and subscribing. Please check out my books, Woke Us Down, a novel, and Holly Woke, another novel. Man, this is right, right on both books, political satire. This is exactly what we talk about here. Uh, in fact, there's a character in Holly Woke who is similar to a Kevin Feige type guy. Um, and uh, uh, the wokeness just unravels the movie studio. Um, over uh, and and we also do, of course, the Pineys, books one through six. Um, and if you want to see my own comics and yell at me that I don't know how to make comics, uh, the Web Comic Factory and of course Superfat WebComicFactory.com, Superfat.com. Links are in the description. All right, now I'm going to try to formulate this in my head. So the point of this article and what Clownfish and uh, Yellow Flash were saying is this is a sign that Kevin Feige is getting away from the comics. Severing the ties between the comics and the movies. And this makes total sense within the Hollywood system because everybody in Hollywood is looking to put their own take on everything. Why? Because of their egos and because they want to be known as that guy. Right? Um... Who was it? Uh, Joel Schumacher famously bragged that he put nipples on the Batman costume. Why, why would he do that? Because nobody else had done it. And if it became a thing, he could say, well, that was me. Oh, I did that. Um, so everybody in Hollywood is always trying to do that. They're always trying to change everything. I experienced that firsthand when I tried to get Super Frat uh, into Hollywood as a movie. Everybody... From the moment I started talking about it, all anybody did in Hollywood is tell me, here's how we're going to change it. And I would just go, why would you change it? Why, why are we having the meaning if you're going to change it? Why would you change everything about the comic except the title? <laughs> you know, it's and this has been a running gag in Hollywood for a long time. There have been movies made about this, about people trying to make films in Hollywood and all they do is just change everything to the point at which it's unrecognizable. This is why I tell young screenwriters some, um, Anybody who would steal your screenplay, more often than not, is going to change it so much you won't even recognize it anyway. Maybe you'd have to change your title, but that's about it. They, they end up stealing titles. Um, but it's interesting that Kevin Feige is saying comic book popularity is not really a factor in movie and TV adaptations. I would disagree with that. And here's why. Now, the example he gives is Blade. And uh, Blade was... Not really a, a, a super popular character in the Marvel Universe, but he was there. I mean, he was around. Uh, he had his own comic off and on, just like all... I mean, he's not the most popular character by any stretch. And the Blade movie was made at a time when comic book characters weren't necessarily hot. In the 90s, there was this sort of like, we're going to make comic book characters, but they're going to be very movie. You know, they're not going to be like the comic. The Blade movie was not at all like the comic book character. Not really. I mean, yeah, he hunted vampires. But, you know, it it was more like they took the Blade character and put it over a vampire hunting movie. That's it, you know. Uh, and he was a cool character. And he, was, he had kind of elements of being a superhero. But ultimately the movie formed more of the basis for what you know as Blade now than the comic ever did. The comic was just, you know, he he had a costume in the comic. He had like a superhero costume in the comic because he was created at a time when all the characters had, had uh, costumes. Uh, he was created at a time, I believe, I want to say late 70s, when putting black characters into the comics was a cool and hip thing. I, I, I'm almost sure he, he had a big fro. Pretty sure he had a fro. 
and um, so he was like sort of power man in that way. It was it was like, oh, here's a hot trendy thing, putting black characters in the comic. Oh, I'm gonna put a black character in too. Um, so yes, there was, you know, you can't compare the the popularity of Blade with the popularity of Iron Man, and then the popularity of Avengers or X Men. I mean, they're they're much more popular, but Blade was still in the mix. In the MCU itself was popular. The entire swath of characters were popular. So you could be reading the X Men, and Blade would show up, or Iron Man, or whomever, because characters would just show up in the MCU whenever anybody wanted to bring them back or do something with them. And those characters, those IPs, were kept alive because of that. And that was a great strategy, and I always said it was, for the movie people to adopt. But there are downsides to it, of course. Like, the downside is, you know, I would love to see Wesley Snipes come back and do Blade again. And I think he could. I think he still looks basically the part. And, you know, he, you know, Black does not crack. And he could... You know, he could play the character again. They could make it work. And then, um, you know, they just do effects or whatever. And if he looked a little older, that would that would make sense because he's not he's not immortal like the vampires. I think it would work with the characters. It would be great to see Wesley Snipes play the character again as he did on uh, that vampire sitcom, uh, What We Do in the Shadows. It's an amazing cameo. Amazing cameo. Um, but... Um, it's because that all those characters were in the consciousness of the comic fans. And the comic fans are the alpha fans when it comes to this. So if you decide you're going to go see a movie, or you're, you're deciding, and this was when movies were a thing, movies aren't even a thing anymore, really. But if, if you're deciding on entertainment, let's say, and it's a comic book thing, you call your comic book geek friend. You used to. Say, is this, is this any good? What is this? And they would know because they were, they may not read Blade specifically because Blade would come in and out, but they would know Blade because he was part of the MCU and he would be in the mix. Even when you, you know, even when he wasn't being published, you could buy, say, the, the Guide to the Marvel Universe, which would have every single character listed. You could collect them all A to Z, and then you could read about their origins, these obscure characters that were either out of print or hadn't been published in a while or would show up as a guest appearance in whatever. Uh, Blade had come back during um, the, 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 the phase of Marvel Comics when they were launching imprint after imprint after imprint. And one of the imprints, excuse me, was a supernatural imprint where it was Ghost Rider, Johnny Blaze, Blade, maybe one or two others, I don't remember. Um, didn't last long, but I mean, I'm sure he had at least 20 issue run or whatever. And um, so these characters have credibility. They have street cred, even if they don't have the fame, quote unquote, that these that these uh, Hollywood guys tend to not acknowledge. And I tried to explain to them this sort of process. And now with the internet, you know, all these fans talk to each other. So if there is a talk of a Blade movie, guys like me, Yellow Flash, and clownfish and whomever they talk about it on the internet and that creates a buzz or it creates a not buzz a negative buzz like oh this is going to be woke um so without those comic books without those popularity there's no there's no talk about this i mean what do, what are you guys going to create better than the marvel universe you i cannot wait until one of these hollywood jagoffs tries to create some superhero character that like Jam and I mean it's already happened with, uh, I guess uh, Ms. Marvels, Ms. Marvel or Ms. Marvel, some character that the current head of Marvel Comics created or f sort of forced into the MCU that she's going to try to make popular. It's going to be a disaster. The comic was already a disaster. Everything coming out of Marvel Comics these days, in my view, is a complete and utter freaking s show. So. You're going to tell me the Hollywood guys are going to do it better than guys who were like working on this stuff for decades and developed it and developed it and developed it. And it was a development process over the years. 
you know, they <clears throat> they would combine comic book companies and be forced to change or origin stories, or they would readapt things, or they would re reveal stuff. Um, because when you write these characters over and over again, you know, when you do something for 50, 100, 500 issues, 1,000 issues, eventually you have to explore every nook and cranny. And um, that's development. That's the development that Hollywood never has for a lot of their stuff. They never have that kind of development. And so, you know, with Doctor Strange, let's say, you might have hundreds of issues. You're not going to put them all in the movie, but you have them to draw from. You can go through it and kind of just pick and choose, oh, yeah, this is a great issue, and this is a great element here, and this is this is something we'll, we'll factor in, or, oh, this stuff is just nonsense. We don't want to... We don't want to do this. This is old, dated crap. We're not going to bother with that. That you can sort of pick and choose. With with new develop, newly developed stuff, you don't have that long history to draw from. You don't have villains to draw from. I mean, look, you know, the Suicide Squad, they needed a villain. They just went through the DCU and found Starro. Uh, Starro the Conqueror, who was never a good villain. I could have told them that, but... DC, uh, unfortunately, doesn't have many good, don't have many good villains. That's, that's the, really the dearth over at DC. They're, they don't have, Marvel always had better villains. Um, DC had better heroes to some extent, but most of their heroes would fight criminals because they were old characters. Like, you know, Superman and Batman fought like mafia guys and gangsters and guys with machine guns. Because they were considered dangerous at that time, um, you know. Now, yeah, people people look at that and go, "Whoa, whoa, whoa what are they going to fight?" Ah, they're they're just guys with guns. <laughs> so um, I think this is part of Hollywood's way to sever the ties with comics because it's most likely that the people they look at the people in the comic book company and go, "Oh my God, these people are maniac woke idiots." who continue to follow this trend, which is their fault, by the way. It's Hollywood's fault because they bought the company and they stocked it full of woke idiots and now they're not creating anything worth a damn. So what are they? Oh, well, this didn't work. They're going to just close down the whole division and farm it out to somebody who's actually talented. Because when you farm it out, uh, those guys will have to put, put out something that people want to read or they'll go broke because licensing fees are a lot of money. Uh, or they'll have to do their own comics. So, you know, Ethan Van Skyver, who's doing Cyber Frog, he can't afford to put out some woke piece of garbage that nobody wants to read because he wants to spout off about whatever, you know, he's not woke, but, uh, you know, whatever political thing he wants to do. People want to be entertained, and they're, they're buying this, you know, for some people, an unknown quantity, they want to know that it's good. They want to see that it's good. And they can see it from, you know, Cyber, cyber Frog's covers and stuff because it's crazy, you know, cybernetic frog, alien guy, running around fighting and shooting lasers. That's what people want from him. When you see stuff at Marvel Comics, now you don't see that kind of stuff anymore. You see, you know, muddled colors and you know, this latest ridiculous dinner that they're going to have with the X-Men and their villains. Like, oh, everybody, everybody's dressing all fancy for a dinner for 12 issues. Yeah, that'll make a good movie. The, you know, it's no wonder Kevin Feige wants, uh, Feige wants to cut him loose. Um, I would cut him loose, too. What? What? Why would they want to be beholden to these people? Why would they want to be beholden to the guys who forced Ms. Mar Captain Marvel onto us. The the worst, in in my view, in uh, uh, the MCU run. The only, the only uh, uh, blotch on their record. Why would they want that? They could have completely skipped Captain Marvel and done a Black Widow movie. That's what, that's the movie, that's where the movie could have been. Could have been Black Widow, Hulk. Right there. Because they... You know, implied this sort of love affair between the Hulk and Black Widow, which would have been great. Would have been great. Would have been tragic and ended badly, but uh, would have been great. Would have been absolutely great. Uh, but 
they're not going to do it. And uh, it's too late now. Uh, the old Hollywood would have done that, I think. The old Hollywood would have done that. 20 years ago, yeah, it would have been a no-brainer. We'd have been like, oh, no, no, no. we gotta, we got to do a Black Widow Hulk movie where there's big romance. Oh, that'd be great. That'd be great. And people would have loved it. People would have loved it. Instead, we get Ms. Marvel. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> I'm a woman. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, uh, good luck with that sequel. Good luck with that sequel. Um, so... It, it's, it is a, in my view, it is a factor in the movie. And, uh, but because it's become so poisoned, <laughs> the current uh, comic fans and current Marvel comics, no, they're not a factor. Because they're going down the tubes. The, the fans hate Marvel comics, in my view. Yeah, you got a couple of, a handful of fangirls on Twitter who love it talk about it endlessly but you have more girls talking about it than actually buying the comics ladies so uh it doesn't surprise me this this is laying the groundwork to close the division close it up close it up do your own characters get out of the mcu it's only it's only going to have less and less of a return anyway chang chi might be fun you know black widow might be watchable because scarlet joe is in it um you know, and a couple others, the Doctor Strange movie might be okay because you'll probably see a bunch of the other characters in alternate universes. But we're at the we're at the dregs here. We're at the dregs of Marvel. You know what what are you, what are you going to keep where are you, what are you going to keep drudging up if you can't bring back Captain America and you can't bring back Tony Stark and you can't bring back you know the characters we love and you're going to keep giving us the B team and then new actors we don't even know. You're going to be right where the comic sales are. Those were in the toilet too. You know, USA agent Captain America wasn't what people wanted. They'd accept it for a while, but then as sales would drop, Marvel would go, uh, bring back Steve Rogers. Bring back Steve. Have to. Have to bring him back. It's, it's happened a million times. You know, at some point, they're just going to recast everybody and redo it all again. Uh, but hopefully, by that time, uh, they will, the trend of woke will be dead and we'll be back to actually making movies instead of uh, begging people to come see their woke garbage. As, uh, as we talked about yesterday in Holly, Holly Woke Hot Take, which just got posted today on BitChute because I'm having so many problems with BitChute. Anyhow, that's my rant. We'll see you in the next one.